Let's look at how to uh, use those derivative operators to construct a gradient. So recall that a gradient vector is uh, the components of the derivative, x derivative, and the y derivative. So we can take the magnitude of the gradient by taking the sum of the squares and taking the square root like this. So a high value of the magnitude would indicate uh, essentially a, a location of an edge in the image where there was a large transition from light to dark or dark to light. The gradient direction we can get by taking the arctangent of the y derivative divided by the x derivative. So this would show the angle of that, um, the largest uh, directional change with respect to the uh, x-axis. For these directional derivatives, um, or I'm sorry, the x and y derivatives, we can use the Sobel operators um, to approximate the derivative. So let's take an example in MATLAB. Um, this image, the moon, is um, kind of like a circle. Okay, so here's my image. Um, I'm going to create the Sobel Y operator, which looks like um, this. And the Sobel X, of course, is just the transpose of the Sobel Y operator. Next, I'll apply the um, Sobel X and Sobel Y operators using IM filter. And display those. And I'll just show really quick the use of the subplot function in MATLAB. Um, which allows me to put multiple images in a um, in a single figure. Okay, so that's what I get. Um, this isn't quite right though because um, the x derivative looks okay, but the y derivative. Uh, I'm not seeing anything down here. I'm just seeing the upper part here. So I should be seeing some, some tr vertical transitions corresponding to these edges down here. And the reason is that um, we're actually using uh, an image that is of type uh, unsigned 8-bit integer. So even the output here the input image was u int 8. The output images are also u int 8. So these images cannot re represent negative values. So the um, Sobel in this area will generate negative values because we're transitioning from light to dark in this direction. So what we need to do is um, first convert our image to double and then go ahead and apply the filters to it. So now you can see everything is of type double. And if I go ahead and um, display the output of those, OK, so now you can see this looks what, like what we would expect. Um, the gray value indicates zero, the white values are positive values, and the black values are negative values. Um, so we can compute the gradient magnitude by um, taking the sum of squares and the square root. You'll notice I'm using the period here in MATLAB that indicates a point-by-point -point operation and not a matrix operation. So if I go ahead and um, apply that, this, um, this is the gradient magnitude. So it's strong where I have uh, a strong edge like you might expect. 
to compute the uh, angle, I'm going to use the ATAN2 function. So this is an arctangent that gives you a result between minus pi and plus pi. So it actually gives you um, all four quadrants as opposed to ATAN, which would just give you, um, you know, minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. So running that uh, function gives me this. So this is pretty noisy, as you can see. So the background here, uh, the angles are not well defined because there's really not much image texture there at all. It is pretty well defined where I have the strong edges. Just for visualization, um, what I can do is only look at the uh, places where the gradient magnitude is large. So this command generates a mask image by taking the expression IG, that's the gradient magnitude, greater than 100. So where those pixels are greater than 100, this is true. So the mask is uh, value 1. So I'm going to multiply those 1s with my angle image. That will zero out everything um, where, except where I have those strong edges. So these are the angles now only where I have strong uh, gradient magnitudes. Um, also a nice thing in MATLAB is to use uh, false colors. So I'll just show the use of that. Uh, color map HSV apply some false coloring to the values just so you can see it better. So you can see how the values uh, change from dark blue to light green along here. So if we were to inspect these, these should be values of oh something like pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. OK, let's look at the second derivative operators. So second derivative, of course, is just the derivative of a derivative. So applying that operation twice gives me um, these discrete values here. So we can represent that as a mask as well. The Laplacian is uh, the sum of the uh, second derivative in x plus second derivative in y. If I just sum these two masks together, I get the full filter here with a minus 4 in the middle and 1s on the outside. One application of the second derivatives is to do um, what they call high boost filtering. So taking the original image minus the Laplacian effectively gives me this mask here. In general, that's equivalent to taking the original image and subtracting the average image. So um, if I have a equals 1 here, then um, I have essentially the 5 surrounded by the negative 1s, which gives me this. Um, this technique is called unsharp masking because of the um, it originated in the uh, photographic uh, techniques before computers where they would sharpen photographs by combining a negative with a, uh, a blurry version of the uh, photograph. Just some examples showing the uh, original image Here's the Laplacian. Here is the uh, unsharp masking with a equal 1. And here is the value with a equals 1.7. Let's look at um, a very useful um, technique now, uh, the normalized cross-correlation. So first of all, let's think of correlation as, well, we've already seen it's a sum of products of the mask values times the image values. This is, um, you could also think of this as a dot product of two vectors. So I have a vector w and a vector f. And I'm taking term-by-term uh, -term products and adding them up. So the values of f would be the values uh, in the image at this current location of this mask. Well, remember what dot products do. Um, the dot product of two vectors, I'm showing here in two dimensions, of course I have many dimensions, um, is a maximum when those vectors are aligned. So when this angle is zero, 
then the, I get the magnitude, the full magnitude of that dot product. So we can use this uh, idea to do matching. So we take um, a template sub-image of something we want to look for in an image, and we perform correlation with that in an image. So the resulting scores are high where the template matches the image. Here's an example of um, extracting a template image from this larger image, which is just the eye of the hurricane. We then correlate this template with the original image, and it generates an image of scores like this. So this uh, has a peak where the original template was extracted from, as you can see here. So one problem with this uh, naive method is that um, the scores would be high regardless where the original image had high values. So to eliminate that effect, we'll normalize by dividing by the magnitude of W and the magnitude of F. So this result um, then is a maximum of 1 if the two uh, vectors are perfectly aligned. So um, if these are positive valued images, then the result is between 0 and 1. But we want to get better precision, so we'll subtract off the mean of the mask and the mean of the image. And then the result will be between minus 1 and plus 1. So this expression is called the normalized correlation coefficient. So if the result is plus 1, the mask perfectly matches the image. If the result is negative 1, it's actually perfectly opposite to the image. So just some notes on this. Um, the mask W is, a, is basically um, a uh, fixed mask that we apply to the whole image. The image F um, is our large image. The mean um, F bar here is the local mean of F. So it's the mean of F in the region of the uh, uh, neighborhood around the current position xy. So pictorially, we, gener we, we take a small mask, correlate it with a large image, and we get that equivalent same-sized image of correlation scores. And we look for a peak in that. 